So uh, this is my tutorial for modding a regular gray Game Boy uh, to include a foot pedal that you can start it with rather than pressing the start button. Uh, but first, uh, I need to say a huge thanks to Justin at ThursdayCustoms.com. Uh, he was very nice in responding to my emails about how to do this and gave me a lot of great pointers. Uh, so you should all go check out his work right now. His console modding is art. Uh, buy all of it and then I guess don't watch this video because you won't have to do this, but uh, it's awesome and you need to go there right now, thursdaycustoms.com. Something like this, just like a button that you can push with your foot uh, so that if you're holding an instrument or are otherwise occupied, you can still push the start button to start your LSDJ track. Um, so right now I've just got a regular old Game Boy. It doesn't have the Pro Sound Mod or anything. It works. Um, you're either going to see me totally break this Game Boy or uh, do what I'm trying to do. Uh, so either way, it should be entertaining. Um, step one <clears throat> is to open it up. Uh, Nintendo has this weird uh, proprietary screw that they use in all their products. Uh, it's called Tri-Wing. You need to buy a special screwdriver for it. Uh, you can get them on Amazon for three or four bucks. Hey, Leia. Um, uh... According to the tube that it came in, you can get it from Silverhill, SilverHillTools.com. Uh, I think they, they sell it through Amazon. But anyway, uh, you'll need a tri-wing screwdriver. Uh, I have, in the past, in a pinch, used a uh, flathead screwdriver by wedging it in the right way. Uh, but it's a s huge pain, and you may just end up stripping the screws rather than actually undoing them. So if you can get your hands on a tri-wing, that is the ideal solution. Um, so there's six screws on the outside of this case. Uh, there's four There's four on the outside here. And then there's two more in the battery compartment. Um, so you'll need to undo all six of those. Once you got those six screws out, lay it on play in the bag. I'm trying to record a video. Um, so now you got all the screws out, you open it up, um, it's going to be connected, these two halves are going to be connected by this ribbon here, um, on the, the back half, the half that, ha that has the battery compartment, um, is a little, uh, uh, port that they slide into, so you just need to, uh, carefully disconnect it from that port, um, so that you end up with the uh, the front half hanging off with the ribbon and the back half just looking like that. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of force. You shouldn't have to like really yank it, but um, you know, these these have been in there for 20 something years or whatever, so sometimes they get a little bit stuck. Now, we've got the, uh, the two halves. We are not gonna do anything with this half, the back half. Um, set it aside. What we will do is uh, you're going to want to trim uh, the upper left corner of uh, this board here. Um, at least I, this is where I'm putting the jack. There are probably plenty of places in this case that you could theoretically fit it. Um, the obvious place is right here, uh, but that is where my Pro Sound mod is going to go. Um, so I'm leaving this space empty. Uh, if you're for some reason <laughs> controlling your Game Boy with a foot pedal and not doing Pro Sound mod, this is the easiest place by far. Uh, but uh, I'm leaving that there for the for the Pro Sound mod. So all the screws inside the Game Boy are just Phillips. Um, you just need a tiny Phillips head screwdriver. There's a bunch on this board. I think there's about ten or so. All right, got all these screws undone. Um, you want to hold on to them, obviously. Um, I generally uh, I keep a, a just a stick of tape along. Uh, the table that I'm working on, or in this case, the floor that I'm working on, um, and just stick them to that. Uh, some people uh, get an ice cube tray uh, and put them in the different compartments. That works really well as well. Um, but basically, uh, just keep track of these screws. Um, there's a whole bunch of them, but they're all kind of important. So, we got, uh, we got this board unscrewed. Uh, you're going to very, very carefully want to lift it out of the the case. Um, probably going to need to apply pressure in a few different places, or leverage rather. Um, 
you lift it out. On the other side, you've got your screen, um, cool stuff, the speaker's hanging off. Uh, the inside of the case, you've got your buttons. Um, I'm going to leave those alone for now. So, uh, down here is where we're going to be soldering um, uh, to connect the start button up to the uh, jack that we're going to be adding in. Um, first, though, uh, you're going to want to trim off this corner. I've already done it on this board. This is a, this is a Game Boy I already mangled um, in a different project, but you'll see that it's, uh, it's got that corner. So basically just kind of trim off uh, about there. Um, that way the jack will fit. Um, don't go too far, but you know the the just kind of the upper edge. Uh, you can probably actually fit it in without even trimming it at all, um, but it's a lot easier, or at least it looks like it'll be a lot easier uh, if we trim it a little bit. Um, doesn't affect the Game Boy at all. Uh, so now that we've got this and we got this. Set this guy aside for a second. We're going to want to grab our jack. I'm using a, a 3.5 millimeter uh, mono jack, audio jack, just like the, the type of thing you plug your iPod headphones into. Um, you can buy them at Radio Shack. Uh, they keep them in drawers in the back, and usually no one knows anything about them because people don't go to Radio Shack for this sort of thing anymore. But they exist. Uh, you can also buy them online, much higher quality ones and all that. For this case, I don't think you really need a very high quality one since we're not sending any audio signal through it. We're just sending a on or off, basically. Um, but anyway, you want to position this in here. Let's see that. So it rests in, uh, kind of cozied up against the, uh, the 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 screw holder. I don't know what you call that thing. Um, uh, so you want to set it up in there, and then on the other side. Uh, you're going to want to take uh, an awl. Uh, in my case, I'm using an X-Acto knife that I uh, mistreat horribly uh, to do this because I don't have an awl, but an awl is the right tool for this. And sort of score uh, the middle of your, uh, your jack. Um, the reason for this is because we're going to be drilling through to make a hole for this jack. Um, and so that'll give us a guideline of where to start drilling. So, <clears throat> next, I'm going to grab your drill and uh, probably start out with a, if you have a stepper bit like I just took off, that uh, is the best tool, but most people don't have those. Um, they're a little more expensive, but uh, uh, I got this at the recommendation of the uh, very, very good Pro Sound Mod video uh, that I watched and followed, um, and I'll put a link to that in the comments thing. But uh, these uh, basically, it's a you know a drill bit that gradually gets larger as you put it in further. So anyway, I'm gonna grab. Uh, ultimately, we're gonna be drilling a quarter inch hole. Um, that is the size uh, hole that you need for uh, a 3.5 millimeter uh, eighth inch jack. Um, you need a you need a hole that's bigger than the jack because the the, uh, the measurement in the name is the size of the plug that goes into it. So what I'm going to do is uh, gradually drill larger and larger holes. If you uh, feel like you're confident enough to just drill the quarter inch hole right away, be my guest. Um, but I'm going to start out small and then widen it. Alright, so, drilled the uh, quarter inch hole in the top of the Game Boy. Um, now let's just make sure our jack fits. You're going to want to screw, unscrew the, uh, the little uh, 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 cuff at the top of this and uh, <clears throat> set it aside. Okay, so we're going to want to uh, just slide the jack on into the hole to make sure that we drilled it uh, well enough and that it fits um, and then uh, just to make extra sure uh, slide that uh, that cuff back onto it and screw it shut so uh, I am satisfied in my job there um, just gonna test that I can plug stuff into it with these headphones here yep they plug in
So, up close, what I've got now looks like that. I've just got a jack that is, uh, that has, uh, been mounted inside of this Game Boy. So, uh, now that we've mounted it in there, we're gonna take it out, um, <clears throat> because we need to hook some wires up to it. Our next step is to scrape off some of the, uh, some of the, uh, uh, uh covering uh, uh, over these uh, traces from the start button. If you look at the uh, front of the Game Boy, start button's on the right. It matches up. There go all my buttons. It matches up to this guy right here. Um, so what we're going to want to do is scrape off um, the traces so that we can solder onto them. Uh, so that we can hook our uh, hook hook our jack up to those lines. So I am going to be using an exacto knife for this um, because that is all I have. I don't know if there is a better tool for that uh, or what. We are going to want to scrape off right here. Here, the trace that connects to the down button. You're gonna want to scrape some off of there. And we're going to want to scrape off uh, a bit of the trace that uh, hooks up at the top of this start button. Uh, we want to scrape off enough that we can uh, solder onto it. And what we're looking for basically is a copper color. We want to scrape through the green until it starts to turn copper. Okay, I've got my uh, start button one done, and now I'm scraping off the uh, trace underneath the down button. Uh, once again, just, just do it slowly and carefully. Um, the down button especially, you want to make sure not to scrape uh, the line that goes right next to it, to the left. Of it. Um, I am not at all a, uh, an electrical engineer or anything like that. So I may well be using incorrect terminology, and perhaps some of you are cringing that I'm doing this with an X-Acto knife. I have no idea, but uh, that's how, how I'm rolling today. Uh, you're welcome to correct me in the comments uh, about the proper way to do this, if there is, in fact, one that I am uh, uh, ignorant of. We've got our two scrapes. Um, you can see there, I just scraped down, down below this button here and I scraped uh, above the start button right there. Um, so, that's done. Now comes the tricky part. We're going to want to take wire and solder uh, these two uh, into our uh, uh, pins on the jack. Um, basically get as thin a gauge of wire as you can find. You're going to want to uh, just sort of eyeball it um, and kind of put this guy back in there and uh, just sort of see, you know, roughly how much wire you'll need to get it up there. You probably want it to be pretty snug, so um, maybe about that much wire, which is, uh, if I had to guess, maybe about six inches or so. So we're going to want to strip it on both ends. Once again, I'm using my trusty all-purpose X-Acto knife, using it for a bunch of things that you shouldn't be using an X-Acto knife for. But, uh, uh, really, you should be using a wire trimmer, uh, but my wire stripper is really kind of broken. So, um, you're going to want uh, to trim basically, uh, you know, e even this is almost too much. Uh, you, you just want just want enough that you can solder on to these two contacts we've made. Um, on the other end, you can can give it a little bit more because uh, we're gonna want to make a tiny loop um, that we will loop through the the uh, the, the contact points on our jack. Um, so once you've got once you got two ends of the wire stripped, uh, you're gonna want to grab some needle nose pliers, ideally, um, and bend one of these ends down into kind of a, a hook. Um, that you can use to grab on. Um, so in these 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 jacks, they have uh, uh, little hooks that that the contacts hook up to. So you're, what we're gonna basically want to do is hook hook our hooked wire into that, and then we're gonna want to solder that onto there. 
Um, so that's that's why we're making a hook. So you got your 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 two uh, your two wires here. Um, you wait for your soldering iron to heat up. So the purpose of the wet sponge is uh, because you're gonna probably get solder on the end of your soldering iron, um, and uh, you're gonna want to be able to wipe that off. Uh, so you use the wet sponge. There are other, there are other uh, cooler, fancier tools for doing that, uh, but I don't have them. Also, it's a very good idea to get a stand uh, for your soldering iron. I don't have one, so I'm just going to make sure it doesn't touch anything. Um, so anyway, wait for your soldering iron to heat up. Solder. There's two types of solder. Um, there's actually probably a lot more than two types. I have no idea. There's two types that I know about. Uh, there is solder that you need uh, extra flux for uh, because it doesn't have it built in and then there's what's called rosin core solder or rosin core solder I've heard both I have no idea which one's right um, that has uh, flux built into it if you're soldering with the uh, with the old kind that's not built in you're gonna wanna google how to do that uh, if you don't already know how um, because I don't uh, rather than trying to hold these wires in my hand uh, I find that it's easier if you just tape it down to the floor or your table or whatever um, and have them stick straight up. <clears throat> uh, but what we're going to do basically is coat them, uh, coat, coat the uh, exposed parts here in solder. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing to the, uh, to, the, to the contact points we made on our Game Boy. Uh, and the purpose for that is that uh, once we actually are soldering these guys, we don't have to spend any real time dripping solder all over the place. We just basically get them hot and they fuse together. Um, that is what you want. The other, other, other important part of soldering, perhaps more important than any of the others, uh, is to do your best not to breathe any of these fumes in because uh, they're kind of toxic. Uh, a little bit's not going to hurt you, but uh, if you can avoid it entirely, uh, all the better. Um, so hold your breath and use a fan and do it in a well-ventilated area if you can. So you're going to want to... Uh, Take your soldering iron, put it on the underside uh, or the other side of what you're uh, what you're soldering to, uh, and then you take your solder and you touch your solder to your actual component. You don't try try not to touch it to your iron. Uh, you just use the iron to heat up the component, and then you drip solder onto it. Um, and what you're going to want to do is just uh, uh, coat this guy in solder. I'm talking like I know what I'm doing, but I don't really. That is what I've gathered from the Google machine. Uh, there are a few great uh, how to solder tutorials on YouTube. I will link those in the uh, comment section as well. Uh, so if you're new to this, like I was uh, before I started messing with Game Boys, uh, those resources will be helpful. So, we have now tinned our wires. <clears throat> You'll see uh, I've got basically dabs of solder on the end of these. Um, where there was none, now there is some. Uh, the easy part, uh, what we're going to want to do is tin the contacts on your uh, on your little uh, your doodad, your jack. Um, do, using a, 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 the this, this same process. Just, just touch the iron to them, heat them up, get them coated in a little bit of solder. The end goal here is to uh, solder your wire into the jack, both wires. Um, and you do that by hooking it in and then just sort of melting the solder all together so that it stays nice and uh, connected. Now that we've got our wires, <clears throat> we are going to want to take, uh, take our, our, our start button uh, screen chip guy probably has a real name that I don't know and uh, we're gonna want to solder our uh, our jack to it it doesn't matter which which wire goes where because all we're gonna be doing is completing a circuit we're not uh, there's no like left or right channels or anything we have to worry about uh, so basically pick your favorite um, I would say if you have one wire that's longer than the other, send that one to the start button. First, we're going to want to tin the uh, tin the contacts that we've made on our uh, 
on our Game Boy board. And we just do that the same way, just, just, just a little dab. Um, try not to touch it down very long. You theoretically could melt some stuff on this if you, uh, if you leave your wiring on there too much and uh, either short it out or break some contact points. So you really want to touch the heat to the board as, 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 for as short a time as possible. We gotta figure out the best way to route these wires. I think what we should do is send these wires through this hole here. Um, there, there's a capacitor in the hole. Be, be, be careful not to, to disrupt that capacitor at all. I have no idea what it does, but it's probably important. Um, so we're gonna want to send those wires through that hole. Um, that seems like uh, an okay place. Uh, and then what we're going to want to do is actually solder our wires to this board. You don't want to disrupt the functionality of your buttons. Um, you got to be careful to not put your wires on top of where the buttons are going to be. And that's why you be careful with your soldering iron. Uh, touch them together and touch the heat to them long enough to melt the solder that's on both of them together. Um, and then hold them in place long enough for it to set and you have soldered your wire onto your board. And the buttons are all these little black contact areas, you'll see. Now we've got our wire soldered to the, uh, to the front of the board here uh, and now we just gotta put it all back together. Uh, you can take this opportunity to clean out your case if it's gross like mine is. Um, also you wanna make sure uh, to get rid of any of uh, bits of uh, plastic shavings from when you drilled the hole because uh, those will get in the way of the screen and look kind of gross. Uh, I'm using needle nose pliers to tighten this guy. Um, anything that can give you leverage is good. But you just want to tighten it on there uh, to the extent that it will go. Uh, if you care about aesthetics of your case, uh, this, this step can kind of cause some scratches, so be careful about that uh, if that is something you care about. Make sure all your buttons are back in place. Route these wires such that they're not going to be in the way of anything. Make sure that they don't mess up any contact. We're going to want to screw all those uh, 10 or so uh, Phillips head screws back in. Um, we just want to put these two halves together. You want to slide this ribbon back in. Uh, be careful because sometimes you can actually slide it underneath the uh, the slot that it's supposed to go into, and that's bad times. Uh, you want to make sure that you're sliding it into the right hole. Um, but assuming that you've done that, uh, you just close this bad boy back up. So let's turn it on. Make sure it still works. All right, Nintendo. Start button still works. That's good. Select D-pad still works. A button still works, B button still works, we're in business. Now, uh, the moment of truth. We want to plug in to this guy. So I've got, uh, I've got this switch. Um, it's just a, a non-latching switch. It's like super, super simple. I just wired it up for this. Uh, just that, that switch uh, going into a quarter inch jack. So uh, in theory, if we plug this guy into our Game Boy, you hear that? That's amazing. I've done it. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have anything else uh, to contribute to the uh, Chiptunesy Game Boy modding community, uh, even if you don't think. Uh, it's especially helpful. Anything is helpful. There's so little on the internet about how to actually do this stuff. Uh, so any pointers you have, any ideas you have, anything like that, uh, I urge you to post it. Um, because without videos like this, it's a lot harder to figure this stuff out. Uh, and if you're like me and don't have any real electrical engineering uh, circuit bending type experience, uh, just step-by-step, step, here's how you solder type videos are really, really helpful. 
Um, so anyway, I hope that's uh, useful, uh, and have a good day.